our supply chain management, our people, our team is really focusing on it. And so far, I have to say, um, they did an excellent job. So we don't see any, any real interruption of our deliveries according to supply chain shortages. So we have two elements here. Number one is um, raw materials, metals, for example, or resins. There's a shortage um, and we're fighting every day to really get the supply. And the second element is, as you know, semiconductor. So also we are very, very much focused. We are actually not really fighting against the same high power f five nanometer technology uh, semiconductors, but still there's a shortage and uh, we are really tuned. We have a visibility for maybe two weeks, um, but we have to stay tuned and see that we go through that. You have to have in mind that the recovery in, in the corona, corona crisis is really a, a very sharp V-shape in some cases. So the demand is kicking back so heavily. And uh, that's one of the reasons why the supply chain has to build up. Um, does that also mean that those products which are scarce currently and also potentially in the future um, are more expensive and in the end, um, in your view, also will, will uh, put pressure on your margins? Well, the prices for materials like, like metals, copper or resins, they are increasing, obviously. But uh, we have a good chance uh, to make, pull it through to our prices. So we have a price increase. Um, in certain cases, we have uh, contracts which allow us to do that. For example, in mobility, we are working out of our backlog. So from that perspective, I think the bottom line impact is limited. Um, but if you're saying that you can put those right prices through to your customers, um, do you see that inflation will um, rise not only just as a one-off after the crisis, but also on a sustainable basis? Difficult to see. I mean, number one is this price increase happens also with our competitors, so we are not alone here. Uh, just wanted to make that point. But uh, I think there are more elements in it um, regarding the price increase um, or the inflation going forward. It's also about the monetary policy. So uh, it's hard to predict. There's a slight chance that inflation increases a bit, but still have in mind that uh, many markets are still coming back, catching up. And uh, I do believe that uh, most of the economies don't want to hold this momentum back. So let's see. Um, you've been saying that you're seeing a strong V-shape recovery in many uh, of your markets. Do you think it's just a V-shape until we reach pre-crisis level, or is it like a strong, sustainable new decade of growth which we're seeing here? The actual prediction, if you look for the models, uh, modeling GDP, is that uh, the V-shape for Tech China, for example, it came back. It's already pre-corona, maybe 10, 15 percent pre-corona crisis. They, I talk about the capital goods uh, uh, in the investment sector, and uh, it keeps on going, growing um, as before. So let me put it that way. We see a lot of stimulus money going out to the market as we speak. It will happen steadily and we will see that in our market and we see it in our markets too. So that will, will give tailwind. Secondly, this money will go into new technologies into the future. So it will go into digitalization, it will go into automation, it will go into sustainable solutions. And um, let me reflect on our market. We see that this is really a tailwind because we have the right portfolio in order to serve this mark, these markets so I have a, a quite an optimistic view on the way how the markets will develop going forward.